Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about understanding that whatever it is that you seek, you must first embody it to attract it into your life. The truth is, we attract what we are, not what we want. The more we align ourselves vibrationally to what we want to attract, the higher chances we have to manifest it into our lives. For example, if love is what you seek, be a loving person. If you seek purpose, use your talents and passion to serve others, whether through your business or hobbies. If you seek more kindness in the world, be the kind of person that is generous and kind to everyone you meet. The more we become what we seek and embody those qualities fully, both through our actions and characteristics, the more we automatically attract those things into our lives. Like attracts like, so when we become that what we seek, it is attracted to us magnetically. As Rumi quotes, what you seek is seeking you. Stay tuned, coming up after the break. For our viewers that don't know about Lost in Space, even though it's one of the top shows on Netflix, talk to us about your character and who you are. Yeah, I mean, Will Robinson, um we start off the show uh, with Will Robinson as an 11 year old boy who isn't supposed to be there. He failed the test to get in the space, uh, but his mom pulled some strings and uh, he always felt like he didn't belong. He has a lack of confidence and, um, you know, it's it's really hard for him to trust in his abilities uh, to protect his family and to protect himself. But um, he meets an unlikely friend in a robot, a giant man-killing robot, <laughs> uh, and he saves the robot's life because Wilt Robinson's, you know, although he what he lacks in physical strength and speed, uh, he makes up for in compassion and empathy. Wardrobe provided by H&M. Next up on the show, we have American actor Maxwell Jenkins from the hit Netflix TV show Lost in Space. Maxwell, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? I'm doing great. It's awesome to be here. I'm so excited to have you. I'm a big fan of the show. I've been watching all of the seasons, so it's very exciting to have you on my show. <laughs> oh, it's it's good to be here. the the last The last few seasons have been really fun, and I'm I'm glad I'm glad we were able to to show you guys them. Yeah, absolutely. But before we talk about the success of Lost in Space, let's take it back to the beginning. I heard that you started performing when you were three years old in your parents' circus. I think they have a production um, company called Midnight Circus. So let's talk yeah. about that experience. Yeah, I mean, the Midnight Circus, ever since I can remember, I've been I've been in the circus. I was born into it. I didn't have wow. to run away with it when I turned 18, you know? Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, ever since I can remember, I've been surrounded by people speaking French and Russian and Mandarin and German, you know, people from all around the world. Um, wow. So I've just been really lucky in that sense uh, to also, you know, have a normal childhood, but also to be able to see more than just, you know, my four block radius of, of Chicago. Absolutely. And what did that experience teach you and how do you feel it kind of shaped you into the actor you are today? Because, I mean, you had theater experience already, right? Live theater experience. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think, you know, naturally the circus and acting kind of go hand in hand. Both, you know, you learn how to act emotionally as well as physically. Um, but I think that uh, above all, the circus teaches you how to have a great work ethic. Um, you know, I. I would always say um, when production would be running late into the night or when we would be on location and it was really cold um, and people would ask, you know, are you OK? My, my, my motto was nothing's harder than the circus Yeah. Um, because the circus is you, you spend thousands of hours preparing for a five minute act. You know, you perfect five minutes. Uh -huh. um, and, you know, I think that that really teaches you the, the importance of a good work ethic to always be prepared going into going into set to always to always be ready and to always know that it's going to take take a lot but it's going to be worth it absolutely and was it nerve-wracking because i mean you make one mistake and <laughs> you know it's over so like how did you kind of prepare for that mentally as well i think man i it's hard to say because ever since i was three years old i've kind of just yeah. been doing it but yeah. um i would say that the biggest my biggest uh help in that regard um was the fact that in the circus everybody everybody is there to help 
each other. It, you really build a community. You really build a family, um, at least in our circus, because it's so intimate. Um, and, you know, it's it's all acrobats, no animals, and you know we we really are we really are there to help each other out. So even if you do fall, you know that somebody's always going to be there to spot you or to help you back up. And also, what I've learned is that sometimes when you do go down, um, it only makes the act better when you get back up. Um, I think it's it's always nice to see uh, people not give up, mm-hmm. uh, and it's kind of a thing, especially in our circus. Is there's always one more time. You never finish off on a low note. If you go down, you go up again. You know you uh, you know you always give them one more for sure. Absolutely, yeah. Even when you see performers, you know whether it's like the MTV Awards or something like that when they fall or something like that happens and they get up, everyone claps for them because they're like, yes, you know, like it also makes it more special. (laughs) And obviously safety is super important, of course. Um, but that's, that's why you always have these people with you, people that you trust and care about to make sure that you're okay. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I want to talk about before lost in space, you've had quite a lot of success. You were on ABC's betrayal since eight on Netflix, uh, a family man across, Gerard Butler. So, you know, that means a lot of auditions. So what was your most, your favorite and most memorable audition to date? That's a, that's a hard <laughs> one. And there's, there's a few from this year that I really wish I could tell you about that. I just can't, Ooh. Um, <laughs> they, they would make some pretty incredible stories. Um, but one that I think is, is really memorable for me was my uh, audition for a family man, Gerard Butler. Um, we were at we were at a circus show and it was 30 minutes before the show and we get a call saying that Gerard Butler wants to meet with you on Skype wow. um, in 30 minutes. So <laughs> we, you know, we, at the time, you know, we, we just like grabbed a blue tarp from our basement and hung it up in our living room as a background <laughs> um, and logged in, moved our computer from our, from our table into the center of our room and, uh, logged in and there's there's jerry uh we we ran over the scenes and these scenes were you know pretty emotional taxing scenes uh i i played a boy with with cancer a really really severe case of cancer in, mm-hmm. in the film and um we were doing those scenes uh so it was really taxing to run from the circus right into that um but it was really fun and he was really loose and such a nice guy and so warm and when then he said Max, where are you? I can't do a Scottish accent, <laughs> but where, where are you right now? Yeah. I said, I said, oh, I'm kind of in my living room, and we just hung up a tarp. And wow. um, he goes, oh, that's incredible. I said, we're coming from doing a circus. And, and he goes, is your mom there? Let me say hi to your mom. And I'm like, okay. And my mom walks in with one eyelash on because she was in the middle of doing her makeup for the oh, show. So she yes. has like one eyelash on. <laughs> she has like half of her makeup done on one side. The other half's not done. And she's just so over it. And he goes, "Oh, hello there, uh, Julie. It's nice to <laughs> nice to meet you." Yeah. Um, but he was such a warm, nice guy, and I'm still in contact with him today. I love Jerry. And you know, three three months after that, we were in Toronto having a good time in your home city. Yes, I mean that's an amazing story. <laughs> yeah, it was I mean a fun it one. must have been epic meeting him. You know, I mean meeting Ed- who's been your favorite celebrity to meet to date. That's a hard one. Um, you know, obviously, I've gotten to work with some pretty amazing people, um, and they've kind of just become family. But I would say that in terms of meeting people, um, Mark Hamill has probably been the most kind of crazy for me because I'm I'm a huge Star Wars guy. Yeah, I grew up on Star Wars. I, I have five, you know, collectors lightsabers in my room right now, wow. um, <laughs> and I just got one for Christmas. Um, so Star Wars is has been like not only um an obsession of mine but also a kind of a parenting tool that my parents used they would say don't go to the dark side you know it (laughs) it, it really shaped my childhood Uh, and i think it's why i have such an affinity to science fiction um and you know i i was over at billy mooney's house the night before the premiere of this of season one of lost in space billy mooney's the original will robinson Mm-hmm. And we were having dinner because we're really close and our families are really close. And um, he said, Max, I talked to Mark and he's going to be there tomorrow. And I didn't want to be rude and, and say like, oh, I don't know who Mark is because I didn't yeah. know he was talking about Mark Hamill because oh. he didn't say Mark Hamill. Yeah. So I, I thought he was just talking about like, you know, a producer from from the show that I might have forgotten the name yeah. of. Um, <laughs> so I didn't want to be rude. And so I was like, oh, that's going to be awesome. And then 
I, I'm on the red carpet and I look over to my left and Billy gets out of this car. Bill gets out of this car with, uh, with, with Mark next to him. And I'm like, there's no way that's Mark Hamill. And yeah. then it hit me <laughs> that he was talking about Mark Hamill. Yeah. And, and Mark was such a nice guy and he was so gracious and generous. And, um, I'll never forget after the first episode, um, we watched it all together in a big screen because I feel like that's really how Lost in Space should be watched on a yeah, big screen. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's shot like a movie. Yeah. Um, and uh, and he was sitting right behind me, and um, he was crying, and he said, "You know, you made you made the original cast proud." So that really Aww. meant a lot to me to hear him say that. One of my idols. Uh, yeah. Kind of made every long night, every cold night, every ounce of blood, sweat, and tears worth it. It was yeah. pretty incredible. Yeah, and you are incredible in this show. Um, it's an intense show, and I, I'm excited for every episode, and I watch it with my family, so you, you do do a great job. And for our viewers that don't know about Lost in Space, even though it's one of the top shows on Netflix, talk to us about your character and who you are. Yeah, I mean, Will Robinson, um, we start off the show uh, with Will Robinson as an 11-year-old boy who isn't supposed to be there. He failed the test to get into space, uh, but his mom pulled some strings and uh, he always felt like he didn't belong. He has a lack of confidence and, um, you know, it's it's really hard for him to trust in his abilities uh, to protect his family and to protect himself. But um, he meets an unlikely friend in a robot, a giant man killing robot. <laughs> uh, and he saves the robot's life because Will Robinson's you know, although he what he lacks in physical strength and speed, uh, he makes up for in compassion and empathy. Um, so he um, he saves this robot's life, and in turn, the robot saves his life. And uh, over the co course of three seasons, they grow together. Will Robinson becomes a young man. Uh, the robot discovers that he he's not this man killing machine and that he can break his own programming and together they grow up together and forge this really beautiful friendship. Mm -hmm. And do you see any similarities in your own character? Um, you know, cause you do seem very compassionate. Um, do you see any similarities within yourself and your character, Will Robinson? I would like to say yes, <laughs> but I think it's mostly just because I try to be like Will Robinson more <laughs> than day. Um, Will Robinson's superpower is empathy. Uh, that's something that me and the writers have always said from the get-go. It's not, it's not super strength, it's not super speed, but he is a superhero and his superpower is empathy. Um, and I think that uh, I try to be more and more like Will Robinson every day and lead with empathy. And um, you know, in this, in these times, it can be hard for everybody. But I think we can all, I think we can all take a page from Will Robinson's book. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I know you touched base on it a little bit, but. Of course, you know, one of the big premises of the show is the connection between Will Robinson and this robot. And there's a special bond. And even though there's times in the show that you think he might be fearful of him, they're really connected as friends. So let's talk more about that special bond between the two of you. Yeah, I mean, it was a it was a hard one to to kind of figure out how we wanted it to play out. Um, you know, like anything, it's it's so unique. This this. uh this this relationship is so iconic to sci-fi as a genre and we wanted to kind of make it our own while also keeping some elements from the original um and what i discovered and what i discovered with zach our producer and the writers was that um was that it's kind of like the relationship between me and my pit bulls here at home um i grew up with rescued pit bulls and to me the robot is kind of like a pit bull uh at least my rescued dogs, you know, they, they get a bad, they get a bad rep. Mm -hmm. Uh, people cross the street when they see them walking down the street, but at the end of the day, they're the sweetest, most compassionate dogs you'll ever meet. I mean, they are nanny dogs. Yeah. Um, they, uh, they're fierce protectors. They're loyal. Um, and they are, they wouldn't hurt a fly. Mm -hmm. Um, so I would say that, uh, as soon as I kind of made that bridge, the relationship kind of took its own, took its own sense and took its own drive and created something unique. Um, and I'm really proud with how it turned out. Um, I think that the relationship between Will Robinson and the robot can kind of serve as a, 
um, gosh, how would I say, kind of ser- serve as a role model to、yeah. to a lot of people out there, and and how we should treat people differently than us, who are different than us, people people who come from different backgrounds,、um, you know, to really treat each other with kindness, empathy, compassion,、um, all that <laughs> good yeah. stuff. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> And you know, one thing I really do like about the show is the unity between the family. I mean, you guys go through so many obstacles. I mean, you guys are in near-death experiences a lot of the times in the show, and you guys really work together as a family unit. So, talk to us about that unity. And I liked also that you talked earlier about you know when you were in the circus, also with your family, you guys helped each other. You know, it's a family unit. So, do you find any similarities between the two? Absolutely. I mean, I think. From the from the get go of our show, we wanted, you know, we wanted to make our own show. We wanted to be different,、uh, more updated,、um, but we also wanted to keep the heart of the show, which was family.、Mm-hmm. Um, you know, family was the heart of the original show, and it is the heart of our show. And、um, you know, even though every Robinson is out on their own crazy adventure in every episode, and even though, especially in season three, you know. Will Robinson's arc is, is is discovering that he doesn't have to face it alone.、Uh, he's not the only one that can handle these problems,、um, even though he feels like it sometimes.、Um, you know, I think that just comes with growing up.、Uh, we all feel a little bit alone until we realize that we don't have to be.、Um, and I think that、uh, I think that at the end of the day, Will Will realizes that his family is is the people that he can rely on, whether that be his chosen family like Doctor Smith. Don West, the robot, or his, or his, or the family that he was born into, the Robinsons.、Uh, mm-hmm. He always knows that he can trust them, and I think, yeah, like you said, that does tie back into the circus perfectly. Yeah,、um, we are our our own little Robinson troop, I guess.、Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, we, in in two senses, I think. You know, our performers come from all over the world, and they travel in a bunch of different circuses, Cirque du Soleil, or you know, all around the world in Europe and. In、uh, in Africa, in Asia, in in the States, in Canada, and、um, but at, you know at once a year they come back to Chicago and we all we all are together again.、Uh, sometimes that takes sometimes that's every year. Sometimes that takes two years, three years, four years, five years for these acrobats to come back.、Um, mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, we always see them again.、Uh, it's a small road, and instead of saying goodbye, we say see you down the road. Yeah.、Um, and、um, I think that.、Uh, Yeah, I think that it's. I think that you hit it on the head. Something that I didn't even realize was that we all care about each other. We all we all work together for this common goal, and that's exactly what the Robinsons do. Yeah, absolutely. I think you're the perfect person to play this role. I r- really can't see anyone else、uh, playing the role that you do. <laughs> I appreciate and, that. Yeah, and our show is all about inspiration. I created this platform to inspire people and showcase success stories like yourself. So, you know, I want to talk about what are three qualities that you think has made you successful? Because this industry is not easy. You know, so what are three think, traits that you think have kind of separated you from others and really made you successful in this industry? And also, what's one piece of advice you'd share to for people that want to do what you want to do? Yeah, I think I think one of the traits is is definitely persistence.、Um, in this in this business, you'll hear no ninety percent of the time,、uh, and yes, only ten percent.、Um, and I think that. Persistence is key. It's a, it's a tough business to be in, but it's the most rewarding、uh, as well because of the relationships you get to make, the people you get to meet. They're some of the nicest people that I've ever met in my entire life,、uh, and I know that I'm going to take、I'm, I know that I'm going to take these bonds with me wherever I go.、Um, and I think so. Persistence is key. I think that、um, compassion is also key because. Everybody is under so much stress when making a movie. It starts to feel like real life, you、mm-hmm. know.、Uh, especially filming in this pandemic,、uh, we filmed our final season in the height of the pandemic, especially the height of the pandemic in Vancouver, and、um, it was rough. And we were all under a lot of stress. Yeah.、Um, you know, and, and we all we all knew that we were up against a clock, and we were all stressed out. And in the final week of filming, I actually did test positive. For COVID,、oh. um, and I think if we didn't have, I think that if our cast and our crew and our producers and、um, everybody who went into making the show, I think if if they weren't as compassionate and kind as they were, I don't think we would have gotten through it.、Um, 
-hmm. And also, I would say something that my mom told me when I was when we were driving to my first job uh, betrayal. She said, she said, Max, listen, there is there's nothing that I can really say to prepare you. But if I can if I can give you a few pieces of advice, the first one would be to soak up everything, watch people look at what they do, because this is this is a once in a lifetime thing. This is uh, and you, you really want to make the most out of it. So watch watch everybody soak up everything. Don't don't let it pass you by. Um, and then perhaps the most important thing she told me was always have good manners. Say please, say thank you, because it does make a difference. And, you know, if, if people like working with you, you're going to work. And if people like working with you, you're going to have a good time. And if people don't like working with you, you're not going to have a good time because you're not going to be happy and they're not going to be happy. And you have to work together to make a movie. You have to work together to make a TV show. You have to work together to make a music video, anything. Mm -hmm. uh, it requires collaboration. And if you have good manners, that's going to take you far. Yeah, absolutely. Likeability, right? If people like you, they want to work with you. And also being authentic, right? Like being a, your authentic self, not trying to be anyone else but sure. yourself. Yeah. And it's, I feel like you are all of those things. And, you know, um, you're walking the walk. What, what are you currently you. working on? Yeah, so I have Jack Reacher coming out in February. I got to, I get to play young Jack Reacher, which is pretty awesome um, to, to be such a to, to be able to play another iconic role. Um, and, and bring that back to the bring that back to the screen. It's pretty awesome, uh, and that was a really fun project to work on. I got to work with a, a director from Lost in Space, Steven Sergic, um, so that was really exciting. Um, but also, you know, I'm coming off of Lost in Space. Uh, you know, it's, it was really important. It always has been, but especially coming off of something like Lost in Space, it's really important uh, to me and my family. Uh, to be selective about what we do next and not just, you know, going after another project, but going after the right project. So um, I'm looking into developing my own thing that I can't talk about right now, but as soon as I can, it's going to be pretty epic. I'm really excited about it. Hopefully it goes through. Um, but also I'm just finishing up my junior year of high school because wow. that is stressful. I go to my yes. public school. It's five blocks away from my house. Yeah. Um, so I am... <laughs> very much in the midst of college and SATs and all that. Uh, so I think, you know, finding the right project is, is where I'm at next, finding the, finding the right one, not just doing another one. Amazing. Well, Maxwell, congratulations on all your success. You're doing amazing. And come back on the show anytime you want to hear about your next projects. <laughs> Absolutely. I would love to. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook.